Hi, it's me, Mr. B. As we continue into the chapter of factoring, we're learning all the different methods of factoring. We've really learned uh, one technique so far, and that's GCF. And you can try GCF on a polynomial with any number of terms. 2, 10, 100. Doesn't matter. We're going to learn about here two-term factoring techniques. So these techniques, these methods, only work with two-term polynomials. And there's really not much to see here except for the formulas that you're going to need to memorize. These will not be on the formula sheet for your SOL test, so you are going to need to memorize these. Now the first one is difference of two squares. Um, it's the easiest one of the three here. Um, nothing to really, you know, make it too difficult. You got A minus B and A plus B. That's the formula you need to remember, but we're going to do enough of these that that will just become second nature to you. The ones that you're going to have to worry about a little bit are sum of two cubes and difference of two cubes. And these are the formulas you're going to need to know. And now if you look at those formulas, you'll notice that all the terms are the same. So you'll see that the a's, the b's, the a squares, the a, b, and the b squares, they match up. So the terms are the same. So once you learn the terms, then you've got most of it beat. Now, the one thing that's going to be more difficult is remembering the sign conventions, but I have a way to remember those. So for sum and difference of two cubes, here's how you're going to remember them. You're going to remember soap. Same. Opposite. Always. Plus. So here's what it means. This is what you're going to be given as the, as the equation, as the, as the problem. And this is what you're going to give as your answer. Now if you notice, the first term is always the same as the original term. So it's a plus sign. The next term is opposite of the first term. And then the next term, or the next sign is always a plus. And it, and it, it fits for difference two cubes as well. You start with a, na a minus, the first sign is the same. Then it's opposite, then always a plus. And once you remember that, you've got a lot of it beat. Hi, it's me, Mr. B. Let's factor x squared minus 9 using difference of two squares. I put the formula up here at the top of the screen. So we're given a squared minus b squared in the form of x squared minus 9. First thing we need to do is figure out what a and b are. A is what I square to get x squared, which of course is x. B is what I square to get 9. We all know that's 3. So now I can just apply the formula. A plus b, a minus b. So x plus 3, x minus 3. Now I think that's my answer, but I want to check it first. So I'm going to distribute. Actually, I'm going to FOIL, which is just distributing twice. So I'm going to distribute the x, then I'm going to distribute the 3. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. x times x, x squared. x times negative 3, negative 3x. Three now I move to the 3. 3 times x, 3x. Three, 3 times negative 3, negative 9. And negative 3x plus 3x go to 0. So x squared minus 9 is what I'm left with. And that is what I started with. So that means this is my final answer. Hi, it's me, Mr. B. Let's factor t squared minus 64. Again, I put the formula up here at the top of the screen. So I need to figure out what a and b are. We're using difference of two squares here. So a is what I square to get t squared, which is t. b is what I square to get 64, which is 8. So now I just plug it into the formula. So I end up with a plus b and a minus b. So I want to FOIL it just to check it, or double distribute, t times t, t squared, t times negative 8, negative 8t. Now I'm going to move to the 8, so distribute the 8 to both terms, 8 times t, positive 8t, 8 times negative 8, negative 64, negative 8t plus 8t, they cancel, so I'm left with t squared minus 64, which of course is what I started with. So that means that this is my final answer, t plus 8, t minus 8. Hi, it's me, Mr. B. Let's factor 4d squared minus 49 using difference of two squares. You'll notice in this case that 
This is a little different than the other problems we did because instead of just a 1 as a coefficient on the squared term, there's actually a 4 in this case. So we're going to treat it a little bit differently. We're still going to apply the formula. So first thing I need to do is figure out what a is. And a is what I square to get, instead of d squared, 4d squared. So I can just cut it into chunks. So what do I square to get 4? 2. What do I square to get d squared? d. All right, so my a is, instead of just a variable, it's a coefficient in a variable, 2d. So when I square 2, I get 4. When I square d, I get d squared. All right, a is 2d. b, of course, is what I square to get 49, which is 7. And now I just apply the formula as normal. So a plus b and a minus b. Of course, I need to uh, distribute twice in order to figure out if it actually is my correct answer. 2d times 2d, 4d squared. 2d times negative 7, negative 14d. Now I distribute the 7. 7 times 2d, positive 14d. 7 times negative 7, negative 49. The four, negative 14d, positive 14d go to 0. So I'm left with 4d squared minus 49, which of course is what I started with. So that means this is, in fact, my final answer. Hi, it's me, Mr. B. Let's factor x cubed plus 8 using sum of two cubes. I've given you the formula up there on the screen. So I'm given a cubed plus b cubed in the form of x cubed plus 8. So let's figure out what a is. a is what I cubed to get x cubed, which is x. b is what I cubed to get 8, which is 2. Now I know a and b, so let's plug it into the formula. So x plus 2. And it's a plus because it's the same as what I started with. Remember, soap, same, opposite, always plus. So I've got the same here. So I open up my next set of parentheses. So the next term is a squared. a squared is x squared. And then the next sign is a minus because it's opposite of the first sign. So it's a minus a times b which is x2, but you would never write it as x2. You always write the coefficient first, so I'll write 2x. Last sign's always a plus, and that's a plus b squared, so it's 2 squared. Don't write 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. All right, so now I'm going to um, distribute the x and the 2 just to make sure that um, everything is everything works. Let me get rid of these lines here. All right, so let's distribute the x. x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 2x, negative 2x squared. Again, I'm just checking to make sure that that is my answer. x times 4 is 4x. So all I'm really doing here is distributing the x. And now I'm going to distribute the 2. Um, since I'm done with the x, 2 times x squared is 2x squared. 2 times negative 2x, negative 4x. 2 times 4 is 8. Now I combine like terms. Negative 2x squared plus 2x squared is 0. 4x minus 4x is 0. So I'm left with x cubed minus 8, which of course is what I started with way up here. So that means this is my final answer. Hi, it's me, Mr. B. Let's factor c cubed plus 27 using sum of two cubes. Again, I've given you the formula on the screen there. We're given a cubed plus b cubed in the form of c cubed plus 27. First thing I do, find a. a is what I cubed to get c cubed, which is c. b is what I cubed to get 27, and that's going to be 3. So now I just start plugging those numbers into the formula. So a is c plus b, which is 3. And remember, that's a plus sign because I started with a plus sign. So remember SOAP, same opposite, always plus. So now I go into the next quantity, so that's A squared, so that's C squared, minus, since it's opposite of the first sign, A times B, which is C3, but you would never write it as C3, you'd always write the coefficient first, so that's 3C. And then plus, because it's always a plus, B squared, which is 9. I think that's my final answer, but let's just check it. I can do that by distributing the C and the 3. Let's distribute the c first. c times c squared, c cubed. c times negative 3c, negative 3c squared. c times 9, 9c. Nine now I distribute the 3. 
3 times c squared is 3c squared. 3 times negative 3c is negative 9c. 3 times 9 is 27. Negative 3c squared plus 3c squared is 0. 9c minus 9c is 0. And I'm left with c cubed plus 27, which of course is what I started with. So that means this is my final answer. It's your birthday. Hi, it's me, Mr. B. Let's factor 64y cubed plus 125 using sum of two cubes. I've given you the formula at the top of the screen. Let's first find our a. a is what I cubed to get 64y cubed. You'll notice this problem is different than some of the others because there's a coefficient in front of the y cubed term other than 1. In this case, it's a 64. So I want to cut this into chunks. So I'm going to find what I cubed to get 64. Well, that turns out to be 4. Now I want to find what I cubed to get y cubed, and that is y. So my a is 4y. If I cube 4y, I get 64y cubed. All right, b is what I cubed to get 125, which is 5. All right, now I plug it in the formula. a plus b. Now this is the part where mistakes are normally made in these problems, and that is a squared, the next term. I want to square the 4 and the y. So 4 squared is 16. y squared is, of course, y squared. Now I keep going with the sign. So I started with a plus. Now I'm going to go to a minus because it's the opposite. a times b. So 4y times 5 is 20y. And then the last term is always a plus. b squared, 25. So if I FOIL, or, sorry, not FOIL, but distribute the 4y and the 5, I will end up with 64y cubed plus 125. So this is my final answer. Hi, it's me, Mr. B. Let's factor x cubed minus 125 using difference of two cubes. I'm given the formula at the top of the screen, and I'm given x cubed minus 125, which is in the form a cubed minus b cubed. So let's find a... A is what I cubed to get x cubed, which is x. B is what I cubed to get 125, which is 5. Now I plug it in the formula. So A minus B, and you'll notice that's a minus because my original sign was a minus. Remember SOAP, same, opposite, always plus. Now let's keep going. A squared, which is x squared. The next sign is opposite the first sign, which is going to be a plus. That's A times B, which is 5x. And then always a plus for the last sign, b squared, which is 25. Now I'm going to distribute the x and the 5 uh, just to make sure my answer is right. x times x squared, x cubed. x times 5x, 5x squared. x times 25, 25x. Now I distribute the negative 5, negative 5 times x squared, negative 5x squared. Negative 5 times 5x, positive, or negative. I made a mistake. It's easy to make mistakes here. Got to watch. Be careful with those signs. That'll mess you up sometimes. Minus 25x. And then negative 5 times 25 is negative 125. Now I combine like terms. So 5x squared minus 5x squared is 0. 25x minus 25x is 0. I'm left with x cubed minus 125, which is what I started with way up here. So that means this is, in fact, my final answer.